This conference will now be recorded. All right. So who would like to go ahead? And, we are studying uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. Um, and I did just get a message from Boniface saying, not sure why he can't hear me. Um, yeah, do you have all the different mute buttons off? I know you got the one on the screen. Um, what about the one on the computer itself? Um, but I, I, but anyway, we're studying today Ephesians 2, verse 3. We're to the part where we're basically breaking this down into its finer elements. Somebody want to take the lead there? I'm going to say about seven. All right. Well, now back that up. How do you how how do you figure it's about seven? <clears throat> Among whom also I'm going to call that one. We all had our conversation in time past. In less, that's another in lust of our flesh. That's one. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh. Another of the mind is another. And we're by nature children of wrath. Oh, I can't say flesh and mind. I count it as one. And by nature children of wrath. And then the seventh would be even as others. Okay. Anyone have any other thought processes on how to break this verse apart? I'll take a shot at it, I guess. Go ahead, Rosie. Among whom also... That's one. We all had our conversation in time and past. Two, in the lusts of our flesh. Three, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind. Four, and were by nature of the children of wrath. Five and six is as even as others. So the only real thing that I see. Uh, when 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 I did this, well, that was different between both what you and Mark had to say is, um, I actually split this this piece. We all had our conversation. Oh. That's actually one. In, in, from what I'm looking at, I see that as one. When do we have that conversation? Well, we have that today. We have had that in the past. Yeah, you know, we hopefully as we are coming together and and be and coming to know Christ, uh, that conversation is getting much more uh, fruitful. But then we had a conversation in times past, which is where our lusts were uh, you dealt with lust. So I kind of split those two. Um, what did you get then? Eight then? Uh, what's or, that? So how many did you count? I got eight. Okay. The way, the way, the way that I did this was among whom also, we all had our conversation in times past, in the loss of, the, of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. I stopped there, and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So I got eight. But that sounds reasonable. Yeah, it, it's it's a big verse. There, there's no doubt it's a big verse. But at the same time. I, I, I've said this before, and it's really important to repeat again. Iron sharpens iron. I'm not taking a platform to say my way, my answer is the right one. I'm just, we sharpen together, we grow together, and we build and, 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 and strengthen each other. That's what the body of Christ is about. Um, all right, so there were several things. Anyone else have any other thoughts on that? All right. Well, when I was looking at where it says uh, among whom that was referring to the disobedient in the previous uh, verse. So we were among the disobedience. <clears throat> also, we are uh, <clears throat> among whom also we had our conversation in times past. Mm -hmm. um, and I would put that as one just because it's referring to you know, that was our past in, in disobedience. And uh, then in less of the flesh and of the mind, in the less of the, uh, fulfilling the less of the flesh and the desires in the flesh of the, of the mind. I would make that two. And then the third one would just be, and 
uh, were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So that verse, I would break that into three, considering what was in the uh, previous verse. Yeah, true. And I do see your point. Um, however, I'm going to challenge you a little bit. And the reason I would challenge that just a little bit is even today, I can find, you know, Paul talks about this, I think, where I'm responding out of that old man nature. Uh -huh. uh, you know, you know I'm, I'm, I, I consider myself among the redeemed, but there's times where, you know what, if you looked at my garbage, it stinks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think I'm alone in that. Um, so it, uh, we, we, we need to move forward realizing, okay, we have this battle, this inner battle that's going on. And that's, that's kind of why I split it in half is because sometimes we operate as if we are not of the redeemed. I know I do. And I've got to wrestle exactly. with it. Yeah, me too. Go ahead, Rosie. I just said yes. I, I'm the same. I'm the same as you, guy. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and that's why the encouragement of the next verse is so very important. I agree. Because, I do you know, agree completely. Mercy and love, yeah. And yep. Because he knows we were dead. And uh, so he's letting us know there's a process going on. Yep. We must constantly engage that process or we're going to be left out of it. You know, we we have to intelligently choose to be uh, part of that process. And that's why he gave us the Bible so we won't get lost at sea, you know. It, 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 the Bible is our instruction manual for leaving Earth. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to put it. It's our book and statements. The, the basic instructions before leaving Earth. That's right. the acronym. Well, there we go. There we go. There we go. Basic instructions before leaving Earth. But anyway, it's what's going to get us home. Amen. It, 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 it's, it, it, I, you know, there's times where I have in my life, I know I'm the only one, but I'm a true confession, where I have trouble reading the Bible, it gets it, 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 it gets dry. But then I have to examine what exactly is dry, and it ain't the Bible. It's wow. me. And I have to come in and continue to renew myself, renew myself, and allow the washing of the word. You know, something I, Irene and I have just started doing is we found on YouTube the 66 books of the Bible in King James Version. And we listen to them all day. Even during the night, we sleep to the Bible now. I do that a lot, too. Yep, yep. Well, Doug Batchelor, for those that know that name, yeah. um, he did that when he first was converted. Uh -huh. And, you know, it, it, it brought his life forward so dramatically. Well, I think this is, if there's any time where we need our life brought forward, it's right now. Amen. All right. So let's go to the definitions. Definitions, conversation, lust, desires, nature, and wrath are the uh, words that I define. Let, let me read wrath. Properly desire as a reaching forth or excitement of the mind. That is, by analogy, violent passion or justifiable abhorrence. By implication, punishment. Anger, indignation, vengeance, wrath. Occurs 36 times in 34 King James Version uh, verses. Uh, 31 times equals wrath. Three times equals anger, one time equals vengeance, and one time equals indignation. Anybody want me to read any of the other uh, four that I got defined? Uh, conversation, lust, desires, and nature. And by, way, by the way, these are being taken from the Iger apps, Bible Concordance, and Strong's Offline. Um, anybody want any of the others? Conversation. Which one? 
conversation? Sure. To overturn, also to return, by implication, to busy oneself, that is, remain live, abide, behave self, have conversation, live, overthrow, pass, turn, to, re to return, be used, occurs 12 times in 11 KJV verses, two times equals return, two times equals have conversation, two times equals live, one time equals abide, one time equals overthrow, one time equals behave oneself, one time equals used, and one time equals pass. Now, I know somebody else also said something. Uh, who, who also said something? How about, how about we do fulfilling? Okay, just a moment. Yeah, I don't have that one. Uh, the, the, the ones that I have is lust, desires, and nature. Okay, then how about nature? All right, let's do that one, then we'll move on. Growth by germination or expansion, that is by implication, natural production, uh, lineal implication, natural production, lineal descent, by extension, a genia, gena, gen, G -E -N -U -S, genus or sort. That's not genius. Uh, you like the type of um, heritage that it gets. Um, okay. Meaning like a scientific term for um, what family it's in, sort of, except for it's, it's a different level. Fair enough. Figuratively native disposition, constitution, uh, constitution, what did I write? Constitution, <laughs> I, I think it says constitution, okay. Or usage, uh, mankind, nature, all occurs 14 times in 11 KJV verses, 10 times equals nature, two times equals natural, one time equals kind, and one time equals mankind. All right, we're gonna go ahead, let somebody read uh, Ephesians, Two, three in the King James Version again. Come on, guys. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Awesome. So let's go through the who, what, where, when, and why. So who? Well, I'd say the obvious one at the very first is, um, well, there's two right there at the very beginning of the of it is among whom that would be the worker, those that work disobedience, and then we. So who? So who are the we? The we that have been saved from that situation. Right. We, and there's another word right at the beginning that also indicates that. Had. Had. Well, the word I saw was our. Ours. Oh, yeah. We and our. Oh. So when we do not represent the character of Christ, who are we representing? Who do we automatically represent? The other side. Satan. Yeah. So in from what I'm looking at there, among whom? Whom would actually be, I would suggest, Lucifer. Disobedient uh, would be. Yeah. Disobedient, I would get that. But at the heart of it, it's going to be Lucifer. That's what I would suggest. Right. I agree. Okay. Is there any other who? I would say children of wrath. Ah, now who are we talking about? That uh, would be the followers, okay. somebody that's following sin, basically. Yeah, now we're talking about the non-believers. And there's also one more at the end that uh, fits that as well. Even as others? Exactly even as others, exactly. 
All right, anything else about who before we go to what? All right, we're on to what? What's going on in this verse? Conversation. At our conversation. I would say among has a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. I could see that. But being with somebody or with some, it, it gives us that um, what's going on in that sense. Why do we not want to have uh, those that are steeped into sin among our inner circle of friends? Are in, not that we don't, not that we want to shun them, but why do we not want them to be our inner circle core? Because when we spend time with people that are uh, not following the Lord, then we start to do the same. Exactly. Yes, by beholding, we become changed. So we need to shun um, situations where we might be influenced because a, a thought can be put in our mind and us not, you know, really be cognizant of it. And it'll come back at us later. And uh, so that's why we try to come out and be separate is because we are easily influenced. Um, that's been proven over and over, starting with Eve. And so um, we must, uh, when we're with the company of others that are, you know, of the you know, children of disobedience, we must be on our guard. And that mm -hmm. would not be a healthy thing to go on all the time. No. Now, at the same time, I do want to reemphasize something I said at the beginning. This doesn't mean we shun them. Right. You're you're not part of my clique, therefore I just I, I'm going to ignore you and push you away. No, 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 no. But they shouldn't be the inner circle either. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's why I say when we are among those people, we must be on our guard yep. and ask for special uh, enlightenment of the Holy Spirit that something won't get lodged in our mind that we don't want there. Absolutely. Is there any other uh, what taking place here? Can we accept verbs of being in that? Say what? Can we accept accept verbs of being like uh, and were by nature? So the were is a verb, verb of being. I see your point. Yeah. And to to be what's what in the, I found it interesting the definition you read for nature I hadn't thought of it that way but it's it's not just the way you know water flows downhill by nature but it's more of an inheritance mm. Mm -hmm. and uh, that's that was what we inherited and that's what what is the going on here we inherited exactly. nature yep. the, 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 right, this tendency to sin. Yep, yep. But before we get there, I saw a couple more what's down the down the line here after had our conversation. Yeah, fulfilling the lusts and the yeah. desires. Fulfilling, uh, basically lust of our flesh and fulfilling the desires, exactly, bingo. And children of wrath. Well, I don't know that that's a what. That's definitely a who. Oh, that's yeah. You're identifying right. a, uh, well, that's a no. well wrath would be, wouldn't wrath be what? Well, um, I could see how wrath could be a what, but in this particular case, at least the way I see it, uh, in this particular case, it's like saying, it's defining uh, a people group. Okay. That's the way I see it anyway. Okay. Those that people group, they follow uh the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan. Right. Right. So so I guess I guess what we see thinking about those last two, we were by nature, in other words, it was just something that we naturally do, but what is it that we fulfill the desires? This is actually something that is not just our nature, it is also what we're actually doing. So it's coming out of our actions. Mm -hmm. 
and yeah, uh, so that you it affects people around it. Yeah, which is yeah, I totally agree. Which is kind of what we were talking about earlier too. But yeah, it, it it's contagious. A have you ever been in any uh, group where somebody starts laughing, and before you know it, you're laughing and you have no idea why you're laughing. You're just <laughs> laughing. It's a it's a fun experience. It's a fun experience, but you, it's kind of you don't know why you're laughing. It just everybody else is. Therefore, it's contagious. Sins the same way. All right. What about aware? Among the disobedient. When we used to be among them. Mm -hmm. So in what words would, uh, would really support within this verse uh, when we used to be among them? Fulfilling the desires of the flesh? No. Of the mind? That's, not what I, that's not what I saw anyway. Um, among whom? Hmm? Among whom? Among whom? But we're talking about you know you, you, the, the the three words here, and you guys identified it earlier when we were breaking the verse down. Nature. In fact, Patty, you and I had a discussion about it. <laughs> okay, so ask the question again. So what if you 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 were basically uh, suggesting. That this was something that had taken place uh, before, and then looking at that within that's the where, and it's it's true, it is the where. But what words within this verse identify that this is something that has taken place prior? What about had our conversation? Had our conversations. Keep on going with that. Just three more words, Lon. And we're by nature. What's the very next In three words? Past. In times past. Bingo. That's it right there. Yeah, that's when we are having these uh, conversations and whatnot and enjoying the lust of the flesh, you know, fulfilling the desires in times past. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anything else about where here? All right, let's go to why. Excuse me. Hi, guys. Sorry to everyone for being late. Hey, not a problem, Jennifer. Welcome, welcome. Glad to have you with us. Uh, we but are, another. We are studying Ephesians two, verse uh -huh. three, uh, KJV. We're going okay. through the who, what, where, when, why of everything right now. Okay. Uh, right now we're to the why. To the why. Okay. Ephesians yeah. two. Verse three. Yes. Yeah, so could somebody read Ephesians two, verse three? KJV. Among whom also we all had our conversation or conduct in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. All right. Thank you for that, Spencer. Now let's take a look at the why. What do we got going on here for the why? Why were they in times past fulfilling the desire? Why, why, why were they, what were they doing? And why, what was the purpose behind it all? By nature. Yeah, okay, so that's automatically uh, in, in, in born into the human equation because of sin. But why? Fulfilling the desires of the flesh. Yeah, that's one. And then what's the other one? End of the mind. Because we want to fulfill the desires of the flesh in the mind. We are automatically conditioned to fulfill those desires. Automatically. And so, you know, we, we I, I, I want to eat what I want to eat, therefore I'm going to eat it. I want to go do what I want to do, therefore I'm going to do it. 
eat, drink, and, and, and be merry for tomorrow we die, right? That's the desires of the flesh and the mind. We live by a whole new set of guidelines now. Anything else about why here? I think in a sense, it's it's because it's so easy to just live off of your feelings. Mm. And, 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 and until information comes in, to realize that, you know, I could go by a, a choice, a discipline of the mind to go against my feelings to have a greater reward in the later end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One interesting thing on the why, it's interesting. I was look, looking at this and it says uh, it's fulfilling. Hold on, where is it here? And of the mind. And when Christ said that, you know, if you just even look at a woman with lust, you fulfilled it. Well, <clears throat> the mind doesn't know the difference between physical reality and imagination reality. So that's pretty, pretty powerful. Yeah. <clears throat> but that also gives hope to to me to imagine uh, or focus, just as it says, uh, you know, keep our eyes focused on Christ. So I don't know. There's there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Anything else there on the why? Let's go to win. Once. Well, there's Boniface. Hi, Boniface. So. Yes, uh, how are you? Evening? Good, good, good. So wh what is the win? Once, once defaling to in the past. In, in time, in times past, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, I would agree. Anything else here on the win? All right. How about the the how? How about how? By nature. By nature, definitely. I I didn't write that down um, when I initially went through this, but looking at this, this that stands out so strongly. Yes. Anything else about the how? I, I see the how as in the, how the lust of the flesh and of the mind are fulfilled by by um, doing and I, and I don't have it open in front of me right now because I'm driving but it was by the the, the doing the oh uh, what was that middle part of the verse read the middle part of the verse again somebody go ahead and read Ephesians 2 3 middle part of fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Yeah, right after that. And were by nature the children of wrath. Okay, it must have been right before that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, in times past, uh, our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh. And then we were fulfilling the desires of the flesh. Yeah. So yeah, that's I guess what I was thinking. That fulfilling is the an action that we're doing, and it's not also the um, the the cause of of. I mean, the what is it that we're causing us to fulfill this? You know. I guess I'm sorry. I'm not looking at the verse right in front of me. I'm not, I'm not finding the word. You're, you're fine. You're fine. Anyway, I see. I see a cause for what we're doing, and and both the seeing the mind and the flesh following after what our nature is, as well as being a cause for for what we're actually doing. Two different kind of 
<laughs> what's going on in the mind and what's going on in our actions, in other words. Yep. Because sometimes if you don't act it out, you think nobody knows, but God knows. Mm -hmm. What about um, conversation, words that we speak? Mm. Conversation in the how, yeah. And, and, and what we speak and what we say and how we say it and all that is super important. Yep. And, and how do we used to do it in the past? Well, however, we felt like it. But how do we do it now? Well, we're called to a higher level. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go over to the commentary of encouragement now. And uh, this is basically my writing based on this verse, uh, Ephesians 2, 3. When we enter into this battle called life, we do so on the side of our enemy, Lucifer. Everyone starts here, Psalms 51.5. Boniface, you got that for me? I know I heard, I heard him there for a little bit. Is, can I hear him now, Boniface? Yeah, all right. Uh, Psalms 51. one. So I have it. Give, Go ahead. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide no. not thyself Psalm, from my Psalm 51.5. Fifty one five. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have sharpened in quitty and in sin did my mother conceive me. Mm. Reading John three sixteen through eighteen, it is clear that the heart of the Son of God. And his loving father culminate here. John 18, 9. Can somebody read John 18, 9? I can. Go ahead. This is from the KJV. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake, of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. Isn't that exciting? Hmm. As long as we stay in his hand, we lose no, he loses none. Neither the agape loving father nor his only begotten son desire anyone to be lost. First Timothy two, three through four. Who's got that for me? Excuse me, what was it again? First Timothy two, three uh, through four. Okay. And I and I I heard uh, that something happened with Rosie's connection, so she's not here. But uh, anyone else like Patty? Oh, I gotta look it up. I don't have it yet. First Timothy two, three, yeah, three four. Okay, Beth will read it. Go ahead. For this is for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So how many how many people would God our Savior have to be saved? All. Oh. Everyone. In fact, they are far more interested in our being saved than we are than we ourselves are in being saved. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Is that Rosie? Mm -hmm. No. Spencer, are you there? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, yeah. So we, okay, Spencer, can you have that for me? Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is, amen, amen. amen. It is within this scope that Jesus, the Son of God, can say, John 10, 27 through 28. John 10, 27 through 28. Jennifer, you want to get that one for me? John 10, 27 through 28? Right. Okay, I got it. I'm going to read it to the New King James this time. My sheep hear my voice, and I know that they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Amen. Amen. In times of great chaos and turmoil, isn't it amazing to know that we have a Savior who is even more interested in saving us than we are in the very act of being saved? And Mark, I haven't been calling on you because I think you're driving. Um, so who's got Matthew 18, 12 through 13? Matthew 18, 12 through 13. I just got to stop for a minute. I can get that now. All right, go ahead, Mark. Matthew 18, 12 through 13? Yeah. Okay, what do you think? If a man has 100 sheep and one of them goes astray, doesn't he leave the 99, go to the mountains and seek that which has gone astray? If he finds it, most certainly, I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 which have not gone astray. In fact, Jesus, the Son of God, clearly says In fact, Jesus, that the Son of God. this is oh. the will of the Father God himself. In the very next verse, Matthew 18, 14. Who's got that one for me? I can read it. Go ahead, Patty. Even so, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of the little ones should perish. So what isn't the will of God? That any well, should perish. I always ask, what is the will of God? What isn't the will of God? He doesn't. He. It is not God's will that we perish. No, not, not one of us. Well, it, that's that's not. Yeah, not one of us. He he wants us all to come home. That's not going to happen. But he wants us all to come home. Hmm. That's the. You know, people have often thought, well, what's the will of God for you to come home? That's that's his will. With all this going on, uh, going for us, there is without question another who holds not to this plan. John eight forty four. John eight forty four. John eight forty. Oh, I got it. Go ahead, Jennifer. Okay. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. As can be seen in just the above verse alone, his character is vastly different from the character of the Heavenly Father God and His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. However, there is more in the above verse that helps us to open our eyes to what is taking place in Ephesians 2, 3. I'll go ahead and read this this time. Ye are, that means all of them that were there, of the Father, the devil, of your Father, the devil, and the lust of the Father ye will do. You know, if, if we do not have the character of the Godhead living live in us, we will carry out the lusts of our Father. Don't we see that taking a place in, in this world 
and by the way, that father I am not referring to as God the Father. Yeah. That yeah. father, if we don't have their, the, the character of the Godhead coming forward in our life, that father that we are talking about is Lucifer. We have one of two fathers. We can have the father Lucifer or the father God. Now, there's only one that ever that created everything, but if we align ourselves as Lucifer, he by default becomes our father. The verse here says so, and it's like, we don't want that. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Think of where he was. He mm. was in he was in a better place than anyone here has ever been able to be. He was at the throne room, at the footstool of God. He was in the throne room. He was a chief cherubim. He was, I mean, because there is no truth in him. When we speak a lie, he speaketh, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. How was he the father of it? Go all the way back to Eve. You will not surely die. Yeah. I have people that challenge me today saying, well, the Eve, uh, the, those that are uh, perishing, are, are, are th those that, are, that don't follow God are going to burn forever. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> if that's true, then that makes Lucifer the enemy the one that's telling the truth, and automatically, by default, God's a liar. That can't be. <laughs> that can't be at any level, because God said you will die. And we have to believe God. Mm -hmm. Or what? what is there to believe if we're not going to believe God? Let me continue. When we embrace the character of Lucifer by murdering and lying, it is then that we enter into the fulfilling the lustful desires of our flesh and mind. In so doing, we become the children of wrath, not because God is somehow out to get us like a tyrant demanding that things be done his way or he will get us. That is simply not the character of our father. But instead, as we embrace the character of Lucifer, we let go of the character of the Godhead. Can somebody uh, read Matthew 6, 24? Matthew 6, 24. We let go of the character of the Godhead. I have it. Go ahead. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't, uh, you can't serve both God and mammon. It is our choice. While the choice is ours, the consequences of those choices are conditional based not on if God is happy with us or not, but rather the choices made by us. I thought of something as you were pointing that out between two those two verses, the contrast in character. You were saying, uh, we're, we're observing how it said God does not desire that one should perish. And then we flip to the next verse. It says he was a murderer from the beginning. Mm -mm -mm. And we see, wow, quite the opposite, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Can you guys hear me? Yes, I hear you, Rosie. <laughs> well, I've just been messing around, and I went through internet Wi-Fi somehow. Okay. Rosie, let's stay, to the, let's stay to the Bible. Let's stay to the study. But I'm glad to hear you back again. I'll talk with you on that in just a little bit. It's we're, The reason why is we're recording this. Yeah. So, um, yeah, 100%. The, the characters are very, very uh, dynamic. Uh, uh, dynamically opposite, and and the problem is, and, and what I find happening too often is we take the character of Lucifer, and where do we put that? We put it onto the Father. Why do we do that? Because Lucifer is deceiving us 
into thinking his character is somehow wrathful when Lucifer is the character of wrath, not our father. Our father is full of agape love. So, any other thoughts? Well, it's in love that he'll destroy sin so mankind does not have to continue to suffer. So in this verse, John 8, 44, who is the murderer? If we look at John 8, 44, who, uh, who is identified as the murderer? He's identified as the devil. Exactly. Exactly. 100%. 100%. <laughs> So any other thoughts before we close? All right, who would like to close this in a word of prayer? I'll go ahead and do that this time. Um, hang on a second, I got a couple of comments here. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I got everything before we close. All right. Lord Jesus, oh, we love you so much. We are so looking forward to being at home with you. Today we, we explored the characters, your character, your father's character, and another. May we pattern after the characters that you demonstrated from the foundations of the earth through to the cross and into the tomb. Praise God for the tomb and the resurrection thereof. May we pattern our characters, our lives, our minds, our thoughts, our everything after you so that one day we may hear well done, good and faithful servant. Enter thou into thy rest. Thank you for this day and for giving us the ability to study together no matter where in the world we are. Thank you. Guide and direct our steps as we move forward into this week. These are times of quite of much uh, much. Ah, turmoil and 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 but we know that if we follow you you will make our paths straight just as you have always done you will do the same in your holy and precious name i pray amen, amen. all right blessings brothers and sisters blessings everyone take care have a good week have yeah. a good week yeah. have a good day everyone you too thank you very much god bless you Yes, God thank bless you. you too. <clears throat> See you next week. See you next bye -bye. week. Okay, bye.